lot of stupid shit in gyms, right? Uh, so I'm going to address a few of these. And the first one I'm going to address is probably what I consider to be the dumbest exercise performed in gym. I mean, even something as stupid as doing curls on a bossu ball still works something to an extent, right? You still work biceps, still works balance a bit. So I would never do it. It's probably a, I mean, it's not a complete waste of time. But, but one exercise that to me is not only stupid, it doesn't do shit, and it actually can make things worse. And it, it's shadow boxing with dumbbells. I mean, we've all seen dudes in bro gyms doing that. They hold dumbbells and they, they pretend to be boxers. Now, the, the, the funny thing is that most often than not, guys doing that are not boxers. In fact, they are like out of shape slobs. And oftentimes they just want to look cool or look badass in gym. Oh yeah, he thinks I'm a real fighter, man. I'm a badass. No, you're not. You're just a stupid shit, right? The, the thing is that overloaded sports movement can actually mess up technique in the actual exercise. Research have shown this that if speed of movement decreases by more than 10%, you have a negative learning or performance on the actual speed of movement. So basically, if you do too much overloaded work, well, you're gonna learn to become slower. So, so right from the start, it doesn't make sense. Let me, uh, if you were using like, let's say two pound dumbbells, that would probably work because in boxing, the heaviest gloves are what, like 20 ounces, so it's about a pound. So yeah, uh, you wouldn't have that much of a decrease in speed by using 10 pound dumbbells. But that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing guys doing shadow boxing with 10, 15, 20 pound dumbbells. And it's going like super slow movement. It doesn't have any, t any positive impact on your capacity to punch. It only makes you slower, okay? Now, not only that, I'm gonna use a test I I've used several times in capsules in the past. The free weight principle. Every time you're working with dumbbells, with barbells, with free weights, the source of resist resistance is downwards. When I'm trying to punch, I'm trying to punch horizontally, with dumbbells, the resistance is vertical. So if I'm using 10 pounds, the resistance is this way. Um, so I'm, uh, there's no way I'm gonna be more powerful punching this way, because I'm not going against the resistance. Worst case scenario, punching, let's say, with resistance band loop behind your back, might have some transfer, especially if speed doesn't go down. But with dumbbells, the source of resistance will not even help you punch faster. The only potential benefit would come from being, having more endurance, maintaining that stance. Because if I'm holding those dumbbells with heavier dumbbells, then yes, just holding my gloves here is less tiring. But why not just do stuff like kettlebell front squats or kettlebell lunges or just kettlebell walks? which strengthen the same position, but does not have the negative drawback of changing the movement pattern. Let me give you an example. Uh, I was working with a sprinter, uh, str strength-wise, and uh, he was a good friend of mine. And he, w he went to a, a professional track and field coach to get faster because he wanted to be better at track and field. And that guy, the theory was, you're gonna run with weighted insoles in your shoes. His logic was that if I'm capable of bringing shoes that are a bit heavier when I'm bringing my leg back, when I remove the insole, my frequency will be faster. So the guy trained on that for a few months. And when he came back and sprinted regularly, he was slower and significantly slower. Then uh, a, a friend of mine who was his main coach filmed him and what he saw was that his sprinting mechanic completely changed. When he was pushing back, because of the extra weight, the leg went further back and he had to loop slightly to bring it forward, 
which of course cost them a few hundredths of a second with each step, making him significantly slower. So it, it changed the movement pattern. So the theory was good, but the real life application was not. I, I, when I did my, I was studying for my master's degree, uh, one test I conducted, because you had to conduct those studies, now, I had people test their vertical jump on a force plate and also using a dynamometer that calculated the exact displacement of the center of mass. So I, I tested their maximum vertical. Then I had them do a set of five jumps with 20% of the body weight. Then after a washout or recovery period of three minutes, they, they tested their vertical jump again. And I asked them, well, did you jump did you jump higher after the set with weights or before? All said, I jumped higher after. All jumped lower after. So, of course, it, they, they add the illusion that they were jumping higher because their brain was comparing the feeling of jumping with weight and jumping without weight. So it gave them the illusion of getting slower. But even that bout was enough for a short time to mess up their movement pattern. It would probably not be long lasting because if they do jump afterward, they will go back to their regular timing. But if you do that over and over and over and over and over again and never do jumps to compensate, then you might become slower. So the take home message here is that if a, a movement pattern is speed dominant, if what you want to increase is the speed of the movement, overloading that pattern, too much at least, will have negative drawbacks. So, so there is really no benefit in punching with dumbbells, especially if you're punching with 10 pound dumbbells, which we see in gyms. And if you're punching with two pounds, fine. But why not just use heavier gloves? That's what I'm saying. At least it has some specificity. So it, it's really a dumb exercise, especially if you're not a box, boxer. It doesn't do anything. It just make you look foolish. So that's one of the dumb shit that you should not be doing in gym.